Welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here in New York City from Mongo.Locals to CUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. It's a packed house here in New York City as Mongo kicks off a 26 city tour out in the streets, going through where the developers are, not the big conference, one-time thing. It's a big conference in New York, but they're going to take it on the road. We've got a great panel here. We're going to talk about schema and data modeling, MongoDB data modeling and schema design, schema list, when to use schema, not schema, the three gate guess the authors are here. Daniel Kupala, Director, Developer Advocate at MongoDB. Welcome to theCUBE. Steve Hoberman and Pascal Desmarais, Founder and CEO of Hackolade, and the authors of MongoDB, Data Modeling and Schema Design. We're going to discuss the book and how it fits in today and also talk about the industry. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thanks, thank John. You for okay, first up. question, who's the book targeted for? Because data modeling, schema design, I'm thinking, Database, MongoDB, obviously in the title. Who, who's this designed for? So it's primarily written for two audiences. One audience are going to be data professionals who might have a lot of experience on traditional data modeling, data governance, but need to know how to do this for MongoDB. And the second audience are for developers, MongoDB document developers who um, are very skilled, but they need to know proper data design techniques. I don't know if you guys want to add to that or... Dan, you're the MongoDB expert. How did this book come about? <laughs> uh, well, <I> Steve <coughs> will probably have like a, a much longer story to, to tell here, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll make my story. So, Steve, who's been teaching uh, relational database for years, wanted to have a series on NoSQL databases. So, he started the series, he has a goal of getting six of them, and he created a core that is used in all the books. That's and the, line refined design. Yeah. the specific part of the database uh, the, is, for, for this one, he, he needed some experts. So he knew Pascal and he got in touch with Pascal. And um, I, I received a letter from uh, Steve, I registered, mm -hmm. I've known Pascal for many years. And I seen that the newsletter that these two were collaborating, so I sent an email to Pascal, it's yeah. been a friend, it's like, you know, congratulations, you guys know you're right, writing a book together, it's great. Uh, by the way, I'm also writing my <laughs> own book. I had started my own data modeling book at that time, nice. and Pascal's reaction is like, well, you, know, you should join us. And then we had a discussion, and we realized that what you know I've been expert in was a good contribution to the book and we divided the work and went on, and to me the collaboration has been absolutely fantastic. So I do, I do consider <laughs> that day that I read yeah. that <laughs> newsletter and sent it You guys are all writing them. books, you're all scratching the itch of data modeling and drinking alone some wine. You said, hey, let's yeah, have a glass of wine together. together. I'm sure a bottle yeah. of wine was involved, yeah. Pascal. That's beer. what everyone well, wants well, to know. Beer. Belgian <laughs> beer. <laughs> okay, Belgian well, beer, okay. <laughs> so, so, okay, data modeling is hot right now. You hear people, the model, foundational models, Data modeling is traditional practice that's been around for a while. Where's it, what, what's happening right now from the, from the old school to new school data modeling? Because to me the book is about, you know, MongoDB is the modern database platform now. It's not a database, it's many things. And it's becoming a data platform where data modeling and schema, there's sometimes there's schema, sometimes there's no schema. What's, the, what's this about? So one of the greatest differ differentiators of MongoDB versus the other technologies is the document model. It's the, this ability to store data in JSON, which is very developer friendly and very flexible and powerful. Uh, the danger is that it looks so simple that uh, people, uh, it's deceptive. People get the wrong idea that they can build very complex things without really thinking it through. And that's where we come in by saying, hey, uh, you know, MongoDB is great. If you really want to leverage all of its capabilities for complex uh, use cases, complex organizations, you really need to think about your data model so you can best leverage the features of MongoDB. So give an example, because what I, what I hear you saying is that, in a way, Mongo's so successful, <coughs> it's easy to use. Yeah, yeah. And then, next thing you know, you're doing complex things in a very easy way. And I won't say the word technical debt, but I'll just say it. You might get some technical debt in there. Yes. And you say, hey, I got a, I got a, I got a successful application. I got to do more. 
So I won't say refactoring, maybe replatforming might be the better word, but take us through a use case example of what happens when someone gets in, in and needs to think about the design and the modeling. I could start one if that's okay and we'll <coughs> jump in. So we all I know have a lot of these yeah. stories, <laughs> but the first step is about a line. And what a line means is coming up with a common vocabulary. So for example, I was recently working with an organization in the airline industry based out of Montreal. They did not have a standard definition on what an airline was and what a flight was and what a leg of a flight was. So that first stage, how can you build a system without knowing, for the airline industry, without knowing what an airline or flight is? And so that would be the first step on a line, coming up with a common vocabulary. Yeah. And then, refine is all about the requirements. Now, you, now that we all speak the same language, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And notice these are independent of the document yeah. model and MongoDB and specific, and then, and then design is about making it work. And if you guys want to add to that, uh, design's all about the secret sauce, so coming up with a lot of the things that Danielle was talking about this morning, for example. Anyone want to chime in? When we started many years ago at MongoDB, a lot of people didn't think that you had to design schema less. We, we heard a few things, and the project were small, yeah. and we grew, and you know, companies who are bigger started getting interested in MongoDB, it was not just startup. If you're working by yourself, you don't need to that model as much. You should still take care of things, but yeah. it's not the same thing. But these days, you know, most of our, a lot of our top customers are financial institutions. And they're used to have a modeling process. They're used to have means to exchange information between themselves. And this is what the data model is. Uh, and the world has changed too. In the past, you know, system didn't have to be up 24 hours a day. Uh, they didn't have billion of you know, documents and rows, and now, we have that, so you, you need to understand how you're going to be using your data. And this is what data modeling for MongoDB is about, is understanding what you're going to be doing and then going through all the phase to make things no better and apply schema design patterns at the end for optimization. Things that we didn't feel necessary in the world of the relational database in the 70s. When I hear schema, that's a trigger word for me. <laughs> I get flashbacks, okay? Uh, it'll go, oh my God, schema design. <laughs> I just, I know. my mind, oh my God. I got to lay it all out, all this work I got to do. It doesn't, huh. doesn't feel productive to me. It feels like, it feels like a lot of work. To some maybe, oh I love schema, I want to get in there and model. So developer experience is about ease of use yeah. on one hand, but efficiency and scale on the other. Where does that meet in the middle? Because I can imagine AI coming in and disrupting this or creating value, you know, build me my schema on the fly so I don't have to. Um, Hopefully we'll so never I'm, get I'm to throwing that, that out there as a way to <laughs> kind of stoke the fire a little bit because you have two sides of that coin. I don't want to I don't want to see schema. Someone else should do that or I love schema, I want to do it. So I, I think that the data model is a communication <laughs> tool. Uh, the, the the developer is very good at its job and it, he knows a lot of things. But you have in complex organizations you have subject matter experts yeah. who know the business. And the data model is a way to communicate between each other, yeah. uh, just like a blueprint is used by an architect to make sure that the contractors know what to do and that the owner understands what's going yeah. to be built. So it's a communication tool and it produces a schema which is the contract and the contract you know, in IT, bits and bytes, yeah, it's yeah. got to work in the end. A contract's important. And even though uh, there are schema-less databases, you still have a schema the minute you store data in the database. Exactly. Even if it's never documented. Yeah. It's good, good explanation. Okay, so how does it go from here? So in the book, the premise is what? You should be doing more data modeling? How does data modeling get done in the future? Is it going to be input-based? Or is there automation? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? You, you'll need to go through these steps of a line refined design, but the level of detail probably has many factors, including how complex is the solution? Um, do you want to do relational to understand the rules as well as the document kind of model? Um, those are all factors that would come into it, I think. 
What's the biggest learnings uh, in the data modeling? You know, there's a lot of deduplication costs in one end. You got um, speed and agility. At the same time, you want to be fast. The, the fundamental difference with NoSQL databases in general and MongoDB in particular is that you need to think in a different manner. You need to think about access patterns so you can leverage the performance capabilities of MongoDB. And maybe you want to talk about, uh, Daniel, about the different patterns uh, for the schema design. Yeah, so the, the most critical part to get good performance with MongoDB is to apply transformation that uh, we catalog at schema design patterns. And so may include that duplication. And in that case, it's, you know, it's a trade-off. Do I want to do that adaptation so my queries are three times faster and I need after hardware? And I'll pay a price of having a process that yeah. does an update once in a while. All these are choices and you have to be able to make them. I think in the past it was too rigid about things that have to be normalized and like that. But you knew as soon as you deploy yeah. your relational project, someone would come and denormalize something because it was way too slow. Yeah. Joins yeah. are way too expensive. So with MongoDB I think that's what people learn. And to me, this is also why the NoSQL movement was born. Yeah. Is there was a need to have way to store things differently that address the, the problems of the modern world. The modern world has data sets that are like totally like many order yeah. of magnitude bigger than what we, we used to have in the past. And this is where we, we need to start thinking about the data differently. How are we going to be using yeah. it? Um, one last thing, like if, you, if we could freeze the size of all the data sets in the world and increase performance, I think we would need to model because there would be a point that things would yeah. be so fast that the data would fit. But the problem is that that's not going to happen. The data set seems to always grow much faster than the resource we can throw at them these days. So. It's not a problem, it's an opportunity. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> and man, we've been talking about the cube about these new insights that are coming out of this. If you do it right, the, the reward is new insights that AI will bring to the table. You mentioned, Pascal, you're a fan of the document model. You kind of laid out the benefits. It's almost as if the document model was kind of preordained as a pre-AI mechanism. Because if you look at what's going on with the large language models, it's language, you're in documents. You've got, so it's a lot more friendly, the document model, at least in my opinion, to AI. I'm sure you guys agree, or not, we should talk about it. But then you say, okay, how does that scale? Because it's not, it's going to be powerful, but there's still other data sources coming in. You have, you have to deal with other data. Yeah, so one of the amazing things of these NoSQL databases versus relational databases uh, is that they reveal relationships that you didn't know existed. Whereas in relational, you're, you're forced to think through, to think about the relationships that you want to see in the data. So yeah. I, I think that indeed NoSQL brings... There's no uh, serendipity know, in relational databases. Exactly. <laughs> Hence my trigger word of <laughs> schema design. Yeah. And this is, what, but I think schema, uh, uh, generative schema could be a technology. I mean, generative AI is something that if you see a relationship forming, this is why I see what you guys are doing as relevant. If I'm a developer building an app and the data's sitting there and there are new connections and maybe neural net connection that's not there, that could be formed in real time and coded on, on, in, at the point of code. It's true. So that's an auto schema creation. Yeah. I mean, I made the term up, but it's kind of a, it's an oversimplification, but the trend is going that way. How do you set up for that? That's the question everyone wants to know. I want that set up for me so that if I do have that opportunity to create a value proposition out of the data, I want to capture it. That's the big question right now, and mm. nobody really has the answer. I haven't yet found it. It's the holy grail. And even if it goes that direction, we still need to know what is a customer, what is a product, what yeah. is a quote, yeah. what is a, you know, so there's a, there's a certain amount, going back to the model being a communication tool, that part of it can't be replaced by AI, at least I hope, hope not, at least for a few years, but that part is still so important to what we I mean, we're kind of riffing in real time here, but that kind of sounds like not a data scientist, but more of a, like a miner, like a, you know, mining for gold. Mm. You're, you're, you're looking at the data, you're looking for patterns. Yeah, um, there's coding over the top. That's either, either auto-generated by AI and or human. And this opportunity to set the table 
for new functionality, whether you're a startup or a company. And I interviewed a company that uh, your customer, um, Current, they're a young team. Their entire discipline is code fast, it doesn't work, come back. It's a two-way door. They go in, they try, they pull back. You know, my generation was, no, my idea's going to run, I'm telling you, it's going to be big. And then, you know. We yeah. love that, at MongoDB, absolutely yeah. love that because we think we have the best database for that. Uh, we have a pattern in the book called the schema versioning pattern where we explain how you can make updates to your schema without downtime. Yeah. And it's something in relational database you couldn't do. You know, a migration and changing the schema was always painful. It's not with MongoDB. Yeah. So for us, you know, all the companies who say, go fast, you know, I'll change the schema, make things better, add functionality, it's going to add whatever arrays and, and sub-documents. No, we do that very well with I MongoDB. I thought the keynote so. had a very visionary thing up there. They talked about the role of voice, voice commands. You can almost, you know, hey Cube, get me something. Hey Siri, you know, hey Mongo, man, build me an app for, so you start getting into this yeah. value proposition where yeah. it's not so much data science as it is discovery. So like, if you have, yeah have this discovery mechanism, I don't know what to call it, but it's like, it's the data sitting there that has new insights that nobody has. That's where AI is shining right now, is people mm -hmm. discovering the use cases. How do you, how do you guys talk to, to other people in the industry who are kind of like locked into say relational or we do it this way, our company runs on blank. Sorry, we're going to use these databases. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great question, because people bring with them their experiences. So somebody who's been designing a database in Oracle for 20 years, 30 years, that's going to be a mind shift. Yeah. Um, I think even writing the book, we had those kinds of conversations. I might approach it one way, Daniel another, Pascal another, so th that's, that's not really a technology yeah. answer, it's more difficult, more of cultural, more of our experiences. Not easy. Not I think easy. the data modeling motion is a developer motion. Because you got to foundationally lay out some stuff and let it kind of run. True, true. Are you guys see anything on the AI side that gets you excited about where modeling can go? Because you hear again, foundation model, you know, training my model. I mean, I, is there training data? I mean, all this is like training, I always say it's like pets. You know, like we're trained, you know, I want to train my, my, my dog to, to jump. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I know data. Data is becoming that intimate for companies, where data is the lifeblood, and you're hearing words like training data, model the data, scale the data, leverage the data. That's very actionable thinking, True. and you guys are at the heart of with the data modeling. It, it feels like something is like is in there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, I know. I know from my perspective how I've been using tools like these uh, language learning models. I use them in three capacities. One is I use them to come up with better definitions. So if I'm working with a university and I have a starter definition for student, I could use these tools to come up with a better definition. I also, when I teach modeling, a lot of what, what I do is question and answer. So ask these six questions, you build your relationship, possibly, a language learning model yeah. can do that for me. See, when you're teaching and you're running your events, now writing the books, what's the psychology of the people in the data modeling world right now? Where are they, where are they at? Um, they got to be sitting there saying, wow, everything I'm doing, I got a superpower. I mean, if I'm a data <laughs> modeler, I mean, you know, it's a lot of grinding, okay? Yeah. A lot of grinding and a lot of great work and getting in the weeds and getting the data, get your hands on it, but now, they're like at the center of the value proposition. Yeah, that's really What's true. the psychology of these, that's persona, the, the, the users, the operators, the developers? It's really interesting. I don't know if you guys would like to add to this, yeah. but the typical data modeler is, is us, right? So we're kind of, um, <laughs> we're not the superheroes. We <laughs> not like yet. to be not yet. <laughs> behind the scenes, I think, and making, we're not the sexy jobs. We're kind of making sure to use Pascal's analogy from earlier, if we're building a skyscraper, we're probably the ones laying that foundation. Yeah. We're always the unsung heroes, but without us, this, the building would fall, right? So. Yeah, it's a critical role. I mean, you can't build a building without, with drawings, without drawings. Yeah, you know? that's right, that's right. <laughs> Oops, shouldn't have put that wall there. 
All right, final experience. What was the book's, uh, uh, what was the biggest debate in the book? What, what to <laughs> uh, take out, what should we uh, talk about? to add in? What was, the, was there any like wrestling it, it, and like? It was about uh, whether a logical model is uh, truly technology agnostic or not. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so, you know, this is an intellectual debate. I don't know how many people are really interested in do these nuances, but uh, it, you know, it, it brought some interesting conversations. We don't want to give too much away because we actually added comments in here that discussed why we felt differently even. All right, well how can, how can they get a hold of you? Here's the book here, uh, data, data, MongoDB Data Modeling and Schema Design. How do, how do people get a hold of you guys because they want to reach out? Sort of website, pitch on LinkedIn or? We're all on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and the book is available on Amazon. All over the right? world, yeah. yeah. Amazon. Get on Amazon, download it, ebook too. Everything, all formats. Kindle, PDF. Right. Any Everything. format. All the models were done in Hackolade, so Hackolade. And, and the models, uh, yeah, all the illustrations are done with our software, and we uh, have a repository on GitHub so people can uh, get started easily. Did you ingest this into the uh, generative AI in knowledge base yet? <laughs> <laughs> Do not scare us. <laughs> it's definitely going <laughs> for the next book. We'll ask for well, the to second be edition. Next book. <laughs> Daniel, I'll give you the final word, Mongo. What's the hottest next big thing here? Devil advocate, developer first, developer led platform. You guys really have a great focus. I, one of the greatest thing we've discovered this year, it's the team that we built in which I am now uh, that specialize in doing design reviews with our customers or top customers or strategic customers. And we realize how much value there is in helping them on their data model. Uh, their group would need to communicate with each other and there's a lot of things they don't really know and just yeah. getting them over the hump uh, yeah. about to do a good model with MongoDB has like, been yeah. really incredible for yeah. our organization. And the global distributed system you guys have, great failover, great performance. I mean, it's going to be all a- All the features, uh, uh, yeah, and the product. It's yeah. going to be a treasure trove of insights and serendipity in the data. So, like I said, get the book. All right, this is theCUBE live coverage here. Back with more here at MongoDB Local in New York City, packed house. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back. <laughs>